Want some Halloween jewellery? Well, I recently stumbled upon these little spiders, so I figured why not make a spooky spiderweb necklace with them? So let's get some wire and get weaving. Because my spider is silver coloured, I'm going to match that and use silver plated wire for this project. I have 1mm diameter, which is 18 gauge, and 0.4mm diameter, which is 26 gauge. I'll also need the chain for the necklace, some extra chain, and of course our spider. And the tools I'm using are wire cutters, chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, a hammer and block, and a file. So we're starting with three lots of the 1mm or 18 gauge wire, which are 12 centimetres long or so. I probably won't need this much, but it depends how large you want the web. We want to cross each of these wires over in the centre, and I know the shape I want to make. So I'll bend the wires. One's 90 degrees. Here. Then the next one slightly less. And the last wire's only got a slight bend in it. If your wire's a little soft, you can hammer it gently. This just provides a more solid base. And I like to hammer both sides of the wire. I don't particularly want to flatten it, so I'm just hammering gently. Did you hear that? And then I'll layer them together to make the spokes for the web. So we need to fix these wires together. And we're going to do that with the weave. I've got 0.4 millimetre wire for the weave. And I have 1.5 metres of it here. But we'll be finishing off and adding in many times so the length doesn't really matter. I'm going to attach that to one of the top wires by wrapping it round three times. And then I'll just slide that to the centre. I'm then going to add my second frame wire in, take my weaving wire under that frame wire and wrap it right the way round once. Then add that third frame wire in Take the weaving wire under it and right the way around. And I want all of those wraps to be sitting right in the centre of the web. It's quite difficult to hold at the moment, but it will get easier and it'll be a little bit easier to show later on as well. I'll then move over to the second half of that first wire and just carry on. Taking the weaving wire under and then right the way around each wire. Once I get to the last wire, I'm going to wrap the weaving wire around twice. Just make sure all of those weaves are nice and tight in the centre there. And I'm trying to hold all the wires into position. Then I'm going to come back around with the weave again. So I'm going under the next wire, right the way round it, under the next one and right the way round. And I'll carry on back up to the top on the other side. I'm then going to wrap that top left frame wire twice. 
and come back around again with exactly the same weave. So we've now got three rows of that weave and the frame should be getting reasonably solid now. So we now want to spread out the strands of the web a little bit. To do this, we can coil seven times around the top frame wire. Then move on to the next spoke. Go under it, wrap once around it. And then across to the next to create the web as before. And as you're going round, you can hold where the wraps are to make sure they're in the position you want them to be. Now we've got back to the top and we can do the same thing coiling before the next row. But I want all of these spokes to be fully wrapped. So what I'm going to do is use this wire to wrap inwards towards the centre of the web. And just keep making as many coils as I need to, to cover that wire. Then I'll trim off that wire. And add it back in where we brought the web up to the top last time. I'm now going to coil nine times around that top frame wire. before taking the weaving wire under each of the spokes and right the way round as before. And as you weave in this web, you just need to make sure that each of those weaves are quite tight. Then once we've got up to the top, we're going to coil that weaving wire around that top frame inwards towards the centre of the web again. If you want to keep things even, you can make the same number of coils as you started with on the other side, but it's not essential. I'll trim the end of that wire off. And whilst I'm here, I'll trim those other wire ends. and just press the ends down to make sure they're flush with the frame wire. I'll then add my weaving wire back in, just where we came up to the top frame. And this time I'm coiling 11 times around that top wire. This just helps gradually increase that gap between each of the rounds of the web. Then I'll carefully take that weaving wire under and around each of the spokes again. As you can see, I'm doing exactly the same weave as I started with to create this web. I get up to the top and coil that top wire again. And trim it off. And I'll just trim off that starting end as well. And make sure everything's tucked in and flush. Now we're approaching where I want the web to finish and I don't want an even web all the way round so we're going to change where I'm positioning the next part of the weave. I could have sworn I heard something. So I'm going to leave these two sections as the last part of the web 
and then bring the next round around just three of the sections. So I want to start coming out from here. But we've also got bare wire in between the strands of the web. So I'm going to cover that up first. I could leave this till afterwards, but this way just reduces the number of wire ends I've got in the piece. So I'm going to add that wire in to the second spoke down. And coil the frame spoke between those web strands. Once I get up to where the strand's wrapped around that frame, I'm just going to take that wire across at the back and through to the next space where there's the bare frame wire. Make sure it's quite neat on the back. And then continue coiling upwards. And as you can see at the moment, I'm coiling in towards the centre of the web. When I meet the next part of the strands going round, I'll do the same again, cross it over at the back. And continue coiling. And I just want to make sure there's no bare frame wires showing in the middle of the web. Once I've coiled that spoke all the way up to the centre, I'm going to take that weaving wire across and then coil down the spoke next to it. Make sure it's neat on the back. And then just keep taking that weaving wire through the web to call that frame wire. Once I get to the bottom, I'm then going to start my next round of the web. And I'm going to put 13 coils on that spoke. Just to get those strands outwards to where I want them. And then take that weaving wire across and around each of the spokes as before. Once I get to the top, I'll coil inwards towards the centre of the web again, just as I'd done previously. Trim that off. Then add that weaving wire back onto the top frame wire. Coil around 15 times. Then I'll take it across and around the next spoke. And once I get to that third spoke, I'm going to coil upwards towards the centre of the web again. When I get back to the previous round of the web, I'll cross it over as I did before and continue coiling right the way up to the centre of the web. I'll then take that weaving wire across one final time and coil down the last spoke that's got bare wire on it. You can tell if you've got enough coils on that because the web should then be taut. Trim off that last bit of wire. Tuck in the end to make sure it's flush. And that's the web woven. We now just need to finish the necklace. 
and we need loops for each of these three wires. This is where we'll attach the chain for the necklace and for the spider. So I'll just trim those frame wires. Bend them forwards just where the end of the weaving wire is. And then use my round nose pliers to create loops. Now we just need to decide what to do with the other three wires. You could put loops on those as well if you wanted to but I'm going to hammer them. So I'll trim the ends. And then hammer very carefully so I don't hit the weaving wire. I've swapped to my riveting hammer to just make that a little bit easier. And I'm just hammering them enough so that the wire splays out. And those wraps won't slide anywhere. I'm then just going to carefully file off any burrs. Because this is plated wire, I want to be very careful with this. And only file enough so there's nothing there to catch. And now we can decide where we want the spider. We can have it sitting quite close to the web or actually quite a long way down. I think I'll put it somewhere in the middle. So I'll just cut a piece of chain the length I want, attach it to the spider with a jump ring, and then open that bottom loop and attach the other end of the chain. And then open up those top loops and add my necklace chain. And the spider web necklace is finished. I hope you enjoyed the you again. What have I told you about not interrupting me? Now get out of here. Go on. I don't know, it must be the time of year or something. Anyway, if you want to see more tutorials, hints and tips, check out my website or stick around for a couple more suggested videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. <laughs>